Nope. There you go. <laughs> Hold on, let me hit got it. That's going right. to be received. All right, so I am going to call this meeting to order at 7.04 p.m. Hey, at January you guys 19th. have to go play somewhere else. <laughs> Via Zoom, and all members are present. Now, just to refresh our memories, we are on Zoom, so it's going to be, I'm going to list off your names again when we vote. I'm going to take attendance, all of that good stuff, because we are on Zoom. So I am here. Nicole, are you here? I am here. George? Yes. Tom Lansner? Happy to be here. Bill Sign? Here. Tom Talamini? Here. And Karen Turley, you are here, even though we don't need you for a voting member, but thank you for being here. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, so we are in number four, which is approval of agenda. I'd like to make a motion to uh, move the Board of Selectmen updates and referrals up to uh, uh, put it after six. After Underneath public, public participation? participation? Yep. Okay, is there a second to change the agenda? Second. All right, Nicole, um, do me a favor when you make motions and second just to say your name because we're on Zoom. So all those in favor, this kills me, but Nicole? Aye. <laughs> George? Aye. Tom L? Aye. Bill? Aye, yes. Tom T? Yes. All right, motion clearly passes. All right, so we are on, so we, is, yeah, we moved the change. Did, how did I, how did we move that, Amy? Did I do it with the change all in one to approve the agenda? I hope. Move no. agenda. Well, you have to do the um, approval of the agenda as amended um, yep. with their change in. But who was the second? The first was Tom. Was the second Nicole? Yes. Okay. She's not showing on my screen. Only nine of you were showing on my screen. Oh, well, oh everybody's yeah. showing oh, on mine. That's fine. You're good. You don't need to see. It's not a good angle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're all in, none of us are on a good angle right now. All right, so Amy, what do we say we need to approve agenda with changes? Mm -hmm. A motion to approve the agenda as amended, Nicole. All right, second. Still a second. All right, and any discussion? All those in favor, Nicole? Aye. George? Aye. Tom Mel? Aye. Bill? Aye. Tom T. Aye. Motion clearly passes. So the agenda is approved. Now on to number five, approval of minutes. Regular meeting, December 15th, 2021. This is Bill. I'll move we uh, approve them as presented. All right. Is there a second? George, I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Nicole? Aye. George? Aye. Tom L? Aye. Bill? Yes. Tom T? Yes. All right, on to public participation. Sharon? Yep, Norman I hear Farmer. you. Noreen Farmer, 247 South Water Street. Um, as you approach the upcoming budget season, um, I want to... Um, ask that you think about, um, I haven't seen the grand list yet, but um, we, we're we doing a lot of economic development um, in bringing in the solar panels and bringing in the Silverman group. Um, I know that particular one is about a $13 million bump and they do get a tax abatement. So it's not all exactly the same, but this 2% thing that we're stuck in, um, I'm hoping you guys can look at it and, and think about the fact that this economic development can't just be used to spur on tax cuts. We have so many things in this town that we need to start addressing infrastructure wise on both the school side and the town side. And um, with the grand list growing from these things, I think we really need to take a hard look at 
what can we accomplish with some of this increased tax money rather than just keep cutting and or just the whole intent of keeping the taxes as low as possible. Um, so as you start your wonderful season, I hope you'll bear that in mind. Thank you, Noreen. Anybody else for public participation? All right, so we are going to move on and with the new, with the change in the agenda, we're gonna do Board of Selectmen updates and referrals. So I will send it over to you, Jason. Um, so I'm having some technical issues here. So uh, if you could coach me as to which ones you'd like me to talk about when, I'd be more than happy to do that. But I'm afraid the only way I could fix my technical issues would be to exit the meeting. And I think that would end it for everybody. Yeah, so, that would be bad. So if you could just uh, coach me with what you'd like me to do, but I'd be happy to do that. Okay. So really only thing that we have under you, under Board of Selectmen updates and research, well, referrals, is consideration and possible authorization to accept a bid for Broadwick Fire Department fire truck replacement and forward to town meeting as approved by your board of selectmen on 113-2022. Okay. That is the only um, thing that we have under you right now. Uh, Amy and I had talked about one other thing that, that I'll cover when she, she calls on me. Um, so the, um, the Broadwick Fire Department has gone out for bid for a new fire truck, it's a pumper truck. Um, the one and only bid that came in was from a company called Seagrave, which I believe is out of Wisconsin. Um, and the bid was for $1,049,000 and change. Um, the Board of Selectmen had a special meeting a week ago, Thursday, um, to forward it to you guys and then set the town meeting. Um, I've spoke with each of the voting members already about the, the process that we went through for the record. I, I would just say that after consultation with the chairman of the Board of Finance, um, we talked about me going ahead and scheduling the town meeting prior to it being sent to the Board of Finance so that we could maintain that bid price. In the event that the board tonight does not move that forward, I'll simply cancel tomorrow's town meeting, but so that we can keep the bid valid within the, the um, window with which it would be honored, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were doing the mechanical stuff to, to move the item to a town meeting. So that said, the uh, total price of $1,049,000 doesn't include or is is funded by two hundred thousand dollars worth of capital expenditures that's in the current year's budget um, that will be maintained in the out years. Um, so the first payment isn't due until delivery, which is four hundred and sixty days uh, from the time that the contract is signed. So that would actually be two hundred thousand dollars in this fiscal year in capital for for BBFD. $200,000 next year in capital for BBFD, and probably the way the calendar falls is $200,000 thereafter. So they would have $600,000 of the slightly more than $1 million cash in hand already by the time the first payment was due. This was something that was anticipated during their initial budget formulation a year ago. Um, it was approved by the voters by almost a two to one margin. So um, this we're just now effectuating the purchase of the truck um, without committing what's what would effectively be new money to it. Does that answer your question? Or is that a good synopsis? I'm happy to answer any questions. I see Chief Arcari is on too, if uh, any has, anyone has any for the, for the Chief. Does anybody have any questions or comments regarding? Yeah, uh, this is Bill. I'm just looking in the contract and the payment terms say 95% of the contract price due upon delivery of the truck. So that means in 480 days or whatever it is, we got to have the full $1.5 million, even though it's only $600,000 approved technically, correct? 1.05. Yeah, 1.05, yes, yeah, sorry. Chief Arcari? The truck is going to be on a lease purchase. Um, so we're going to, we're going to, when the truck is delivered, they're going to get $450,000. And over the next, uh, hopefully, seven, five to seven years, depending on what the commission wants to do. We're going to finance it. So what says in the contract for payment terms is not what the town's actually doing. We're correct. The town all correct. The town's not paying. It's, it's, it's coming out of. We're going to lease it over the next seven years. Okay. The delivery date. All right. Because I said this. The, I said after reading the proposal contract here, it was different than what was talked to me on the phone the other day. So as long as so it's. So they have to, you have to met to get the contract amended to what, how you're actually paying for the truck. Seagrave is going to get paid 100% when they deliver the truck through the financing company. 
Um, okay, so the finance company is who you're, all right, I understand it, gotcha. Anybody else? Questions, concerns? <laughs> All right, well, it is up to you guys if someone would like to make a motion to accept the bid for Broadway Fire Department fire truck replacement and forward to town meeting. This is Bill, I'll move, we approve the purchase of a fire truck for the Broadbrook Fire Department at $1,049,658 and forward to town meeting. All right, is there a second? Second, Nicole. All right, any more discussion? All right, all no, those in favor? No, I, I think it's, it's fine, I think it makes sense. And uh, the other one is, how old is the other one, by the way? Tom? I think the one that's coming off is 1990. No, the other truck is the truck is a 2001. 2001. Okay. This is what we've been trying to replace for the last three, four years for the budget before we broke off onto our own. We've been having a lot of problems with it. Okay. All right. All those in favor, Nicole? Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> George? Yes. Tom Lansner? Yes. Bill Sun? Yes. Tom Talamini? Yes. Okay, motion passes. We will go back into order. So we will now do communications. I have nothing, Amy. I have um, just one from the auditor that he couldn't join us tonight. He's not ready for the audit. Um, still have hopes of being done by January 31st. That was an awful long list in that um, email from him to be done by January 31st. Not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. I'm working really hard. Well, oh, I know that. you are. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. I do, I do. Um, that was it, right, eh? That's it. All right, on to monthly reports. So Amy, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I'm gonna mute. All right, I don't think I have anything prepared. Um, I don't know if anybody has any, the last couple months we've kind of gone account by account, but I don't know if anybody has any specific questions. Um, taxes are 72% collected. Um, so that's good. Um, I think we're pretty much in line where we have been in the last couple of years. Um, let me see. The collected percent. Um, yeah, we're 71.49 on the tax collector report. Oh, that wasn't the one I was looking for. And last year at this time, we were 69.67 and the year before we were 67.9. So just a little bit above, um, between two and 5% above the last two years. Anybody else have any other specific questions or anything they want me to explain? This is Bill. I looked through and I didn't see anything that stuck out to me. So I'm good. Anybody else? <clears throat> All right. So on to Board of Ed 21-22 financial reports and I see Patrick's with us. So I guess, you know, we're talking 21-22, so maybe, maybe we'll go to Board of Ed updates and referrals and Patrick, you and Amy can update us on what you're doing audit wise um, and maybe just update us. Is there anything going on this year you wanna give us a heads up about? Uh, I mean, as far as this current year uh, budget, um, we're in good shape. Um, I can tell you that uh, obviously I, um, from my last meeting I had uh, shared, um, we were uh, transitioning with our business office. So we do have an interim. She just started um, uh, in January. So I believe she's on our third week. Her name's uh, Patricia West. She goes by Pat West. She's the retired uh, business uh, school business manager from Enfields. Um, 
from two years ago. And uh, she's helping us uh, two to three days a week, uh, basically to stay afloat and assisting with our budget presentation uh, for this year. Um, any questions from anybody or? Are we getting all the numbers? This is Tom. Are we getting all the numbers for the budget and for the auditor? How are we standing with that? Um, can I ask a huge favor, Tom? When we get to number 10, Board of Ed updates and referrals, can we have Amy and him review all that and we can all ask questions? Does that work? Works for me. Okay, cool beans. Yeah, I mean, the only other thing I can say as far as just this year in our business office, um, at the next board of ed uh, meeting, I'll be uh, uh, basically um, reviewing uh, the plan as far as reorganizing our business office, uh, which will be important as far as putting forward job descriptions uh, to be voted on so that we can then proceed um, as far as hiring. Um, uh, like for example, we don't have a job description for a school business um, manager. Um, we don't have a job description for accounts payable. Um, so we need to get those things done, approved um, to go forward and uh, reorganize our business office. So that said, Patrick, do you already have what you have decided to be like how many positions you're going to bring into the office or are you still working on that? Um, so, yes, um, I can tell you I'm finalizing and writing to uh, present to uh, the Board of Ed for uh, Wednesday. Okay. Um, so I can tell you it, it will be in the packet uh, Friday that goes out. Okay, great. Thank um, you. So, yep, absolutely. Anybody else? All right, so we'll go on to 8C, which is transfers, which I think is just one, but on my phone. Hold on one second. Good Lord, this is hard to do on my phone. Oh, yes, there's only one, and this is the one that Jay was going to talk about. So All right, well. we um, had some presentations and we chose a budget transparency software and the six month price is $5,600. Um, and we're looking to transfer from contingency to buy into that software to run this year's 22, 23 budget through. And Jay has a presentation, I think of South Windsor who uses it already. So it would give you guys an idea of what ours will look like. Yeah, I guess I really just need more of a description and I have no idea what you're talking about. So I will listen to you guys. So the, the software that we have identified and, and have since contracted with is a, a vendor that was made available through CCM. Um, one of the highlights of the annual CCM conference is they have a pretty extensive trade show. Um, and so whether it's uh, Len and Joe from DPW or Patty from tax or Melissa from community services or Amy from finance, as you uh, go down the, the different vendors at the trade show, you can see some pretty, pretty cool opportunities to increase either transparency or constituent services. Um, and this vendor that we have gone with does those things. Um, it, may, it takes our budget and allows you to, to compare it historically over a period of time in a way that's much more transparent and much more user-friendly uh, than what we currently have. We, we have a scanned PDF of our Munis run. That, that's effectively what our budget is. Um, and that's what the public has access to. Um, this will give you an opportunity to, to dive deeper into um, revenues and expenditures and department lines and, and um, account types. So if you wanted to see across the board what we were paying on the, the town side for professional services, you could do that. If you wanted to see what we were paying for benefits, you could do that. If you wanted to see what we were paying for supplies, you could do that. Um, if you wanted to see how, how much the, the police department has grown over a five-year period of time, you can do that in a much more user-friendly way. Um, the other thing that this does is it allows for a breakdown of what you as the taxpayer are paying towards each of these services. Um, I'm going to try and run a little demonstration, but uh, again, I am having some computer issues. So if this doesn't work, I'm just going to abort and I'll talk about it. Um, where did it go? Can you guys see that? Yep. Okay, so this is the town of South Windsor. Um, and this, this gives you an opportunity to see the demographic snapshot of how the town um, stacks against other, other communities in the state. 
there's a whole bunch more demographics that you can see other than population, medium home value and household income. So I'll, I'll skip that, but it's pretty extensive in terms of comparatives. Then it goes into a financial review between um, revenues and expenses. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on view breakdown. It should prompt me at some point here to put in how much I'm oh, actually, I'm going to go to expenditures instead. Um, this will ask me to show how much I'm paying in property taxes. So if I am doing by department, I want to know fun. There we go. So if my if I pay five thousand dollars a year in property taxes, no, we're talking. Oh, come on, mouse. Oh, you're killing me. And now I can't move anything. There we go. Um. So if I pay $5,000 a year in property taxes, this, this is the overall breakdown of their budget. But as you dig deeper, it shows you that of my $5,000 bill, 3,000 goes to the Board of Education. 400 go, 414 goes to debt service. 399 goes to public safety. So that, that argument um, that, that people make about you know, where their tax money is going, we're gonna show them where every nickel is going. Um, and you can see what the breakdown is if you wanted to, to look just on the general fund side. Um, you know this. The largest piece of South Windsor's budget is their debt service, which isn't surprising since they're buying five or building five schools. Um, th this is the breakdown of their general fund appropriations. Added in, and it's just a sliver of what their board of ed is, which is pretty standard for the state. Um, but it's it's a tool that allows you to um, provide more clarity to the taxpayers. The other thing that they have here, I think this is the page. Yeah, so they have. Um, a listing of all of the projects that they have going here. This is a, a couple of different data points. First of all, they're talking about um, their own capital projects. Um, so you can see all of the different things that they have going on. Uh, they have an allocation of, of where their ARPA money is going. Uh, and they also have um, a listing, I'm not sure if it's on this page or not, but it's in this software um, where they can show where uh, tax abatements have been provided. So it shows not just you know where the money is going, but where where it's coming from, how it's how it's being spent, and, and provides the voters with more certainty as to um, you know the responsible stewardship of the tax dollar. I'm really impressed with this software. I think it's going to provide voters much more confidence in terms of um, you know being able to see where their own dollar is going. It's it's something that we've signed up for for two years to give it a try. Um, Amy and I have been hustling to try and make sure that it's in place for this budget cycle. Uh, we have our uh, our next meeting. It's an organizational meeting in terms of, of laying out the website. Uh, we have our next meeting with them tomorrow. Um, so it's, it's an effort to be more clear to the voters as to what we're doing with our money. Any questions or comments on that? I'll just comment too. So I did see you present this at another meeting, Jay. So I think the one thing that I do remember, and I'm just thinking from our constituents, a lot of the time their questions come from the Board of Ed side. So just to be clear, the Board of Ed would just be singular. There wouldn't It wouldn't be a breakdown like we can see with the town appropriations, correct? So at the moment, that's true. Um, Dr. Tudrin has quite enough on his plate right now for me to have tried to throw this at him this year. Um, but if it's successful on the town side, there is a board of ed component to it too, that would provide all of those same things. Um, again, given you know his acclimation to the role, the transition from uh, one business manager to another, having to deal with the, the rolling punches on a daily basis that COVID brings, it, and, and really not knowing for ourselves what I would be potentially trying to sign him up for, this didn't seem like the right year to approach him with it, but if it's successful on our side, there's a component that they could use to offer that same um, transparency to, to the voters. Jason? Yeah. Um, so just clarification purpose, because we're using all different lengths of time. So Amy, when you said this transfer, you said the $5,600 was a half a year. Jason, mm -hmm. you said we have to sign on for two years. So we did. I guess Okay, so my question to you is, this is half a year. So what is the whole two years gonna cost? 11.2 plus a, a onboarding charge of I think $1,800. So, so $5,600 each year? 5, for a total of 11,000? 
5,600 this year, 11,200 next year, plus the 1,800 setup charge. We have budgeted the cost for next year in our IT budget. All right, so 18,000, somewhere around $18,600 for two years. Mm-hmm. Anybody else with any other questions? So I was just going to ask, is this a two year? idea that we're looking at or are we thinking about going past two years with it because i would wonder once you put everything in it you're probably going to want to continue with it so is there any sort of like long-term idea around this we could re-up the contract after the initial one but the initial one was a two-year period i'm hopeful that it's going to be successful and it's going to be a, a popular addition to um the transparency that we can provide to, to voters so i'm hoping it'll be an expectation that it's kept but you know, if we if we get into it and decide that it's not providing what we hoped it would, or it's uh, too staff intensive to maintain, or you know whatever the reason, we can get out after two years. Are we able to retain anything that we put in after those two years? So I guess who owns everything that goes in? All the data is ours. Uh, all the data comes out of Munis. Amy uh, did a data download for them, and uh, they have been working on uploading it into their software system since. Uh, just before Christmas, um, so it's 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 in process. It's our data. This is Bill. Just a quick question: um, Programs like this, does it have a tracker on it to tell how many people from the town actually use it, or is it just we don't have an idea who who actually logs or not who logs, but how many times it gets hit or used or whatever? Good question. Uh, we don't know the answer to that offhand. I don't know the answer to that offhand, but we can certainly ask that in our meeting tomorrow. I mean, that would just be something to evaluate at the end of the contract you have if it was used by, you know, just a handful or, you know, minimal amount of time may not be worth, but then going forward, if it's used a lot, then yeah, it would make sense to renew on from there. But I'm just curious if there's a way to track the, the use of it. Well, I'll tell you, if it's, um, if it's not unique users, I'm a data nerd, so I'll be on this thing constantly. Um, I can single-handedly jack that thing up. But I think that... Um, Amy and I can certainly get some clarification on that. I that would be being a data nerd. That would be um, an interesting data set to see how widely it's used. I also think, and uh, I think Noreen made mention of this earlier. Um, so economic development is something that I, I am really focused on. And one of the things that is helpful when talking to companies from away is, is to be able to tell the story about what your community is about what it values, where its priorities are. Um, and this is putting that information right out there. Um, so if there's a company that's looking to relocate from you know, East Hartford or you know, East Carolina, there's an opportunity for them to, to see where we, we are putting our, our priorities and our values in a, in a forward facing way. Anybody else, questions? This is a lot of salesmanship for a transfer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if there are no more questions or um, concerns, if somebody would like to make a motion, that would be good. This is Bill. I'll move we approve transfer request number 12 uh, for the amount of $5,600 from the contingency line to the IT software licensing line. All right. Is there a second? Um, T, I'll second that. All right, any more discussion? All right, so all those in favor. I'm going to go by your faces now because too many pages to scroll up. Tom T? Yes. Tom L? Yes. Bill Sign? Yes. George? Yes. And Nicole? Yes. All right, motion passes. All right. Thank you, folks. Are you welcome? Okay. All right, and because I need to scroll through 80 pages, what, what's next on our agenda? Um, just the reconciliation. All right, so where do we stand on reconciliations? We are reconciled through December and everything but the general fund for the town. 
Our interfunds are in balance for fiscal year 21. Uh, I forgot to look for 22. <laughs> But we're getting there. <laughs> That's a good thing. All right. And I guess we'll go to Board of Education updates and referrals. Um, and probably start with the audit. And I guess, Amy, you and Patrick can touch on that. Are we getting anywhere? What are we doing? How are we doing? I'm going to let you guys talk and update everybody with our situation. Um. Yeah, so I believe uh, both Amy and I have uh, spoken with uh, Mike, um, Dan Venter um, at some point uh, today. Uh, there's some outstanding items that need to be completed um, on the payroll side. Um, so he did, I did speak with him. Um, he did email me a list of things um, as far as uh, needing to be resolved um, <clears throat> uh, just based on it and based on um, uh, looking at it and just knowing where we are on the Board of Ed side. Um, I am going to be utilizing an outside consultant. Um, her name's Sherry Danello. Um, uh, she uh, is a former business uh, school business manager for uh, Southington uh, for 20 plus years. She's uh, basically helped um, uh, as far as uh, providing some consultation to myself um, with uh, providing recommendations on the reorganizing um, of our business office and um, I'm going to be utilizing her for three days next week to attack uh, these three items. Um, um, I just spoke to Mike late this afternoon, um, so I haven't had the opportunity to connect with Amy on it because certainly I want Sherry to connect with her and Mike um, to uh, uh, essentially move forward on this uh, so we can resolve the issues that are on the uh, BOE end. Um, I mean, certainly, obviously, I think everyone's aware Amy's been a tremendous help as far as uh, um, assisting on the Board of Ed side, too, as far as getting this resolved. So, Tom T., you had questions. Sorry, I pushed it off to here. So what was the question that you were? I'm coming with a realiz realiz yeah, wow. <laughs> Re yeah, right. You know what I'm trying to say. Realistic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how are we coming with it? I mean, there's, there, is it closer with the real, we can, yeah, wow. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, we, so I think there? what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> I mean, what have we found? <coughs> what are we finding? What have we been able to solve? And are we hoping January 31st? Um, Amy, what's your take? So I would say, yes, we're hoping for January 31st. Um, and so far, we've gotten all the funds but the general fund done. Mike, what he did for audit entries, I have booked. Um, the payroll reclass that we talked about every single month last year, that the people weren't in the right place, has been done for fiscal 21. The people have been fixed for going forward. So now we just have to do a reclass for fiscal 22 for the year, for the months between July and now. So we definitely are moving in the right direction. Um, several things have been adjusted. Now we just have to find some problems, fix some problems and do some reclasses. So my goal would be before the end of next week, having clean financials. So then we can do that rest of that list that shows all the other things that have to happen. I think Mike's already doing some of the additional testing he needs to do. Um, so he's working on some of the list. We're working on some of the list. Patrick has somebody working on trying to research some of the stuff. So we're getting there. How's that for accurate, Patrick? <laughs> uh, uh, pretty accurate. I don't think I could have said it better. I mean, um, certainly on, on our end, I would expect to have um, more information by the end of the day uh, next Wednesday. I mean, um, I mean, certainly Amy and I will both know. Um, so, I mean, whether I, I send them an uh, email or a report, I mean, certainly through email can report an update. So I guess the question I have is, as you're fixing these and being able to change people to where they belong and do all that, are we getting a different bottom line than where we ended the year? Are we going to, is the board of ed either going to have a large debit, a large credit? I mean, is it changing the bottom line, Amy? 
Depending on what the issue is, probably yes. We're just not sure what the issues are right now. We have a couple ideas that we're working on, but without having certainty that that's the issue, we don't really have an answer to that question. Okay, that's a very good answer. <laughs> as soon as we know, yeah. you guys will know. All right, anybody else? Or are we good on that section? So just to clarify, so we have we pretty much taken this over then from TMS? I know they were gonna help see it out, but are we just pretty much taking it over at this point? So I'll tell you that they're still involved. I would classify their involvement as minimal and being phased out. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? All right. So that's that's the audit part. Is there anything else, Patrick, going on that you wanted to let us know about? Anything good, fun? I, I always have good and fun stuff for the schools. Um, uh, I mean, we're halfway through the school year. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, with everything going on still with COVID and the pandemic, obviously with us participating in, um, on Zoom, I mean, one thing I think is uh, very successful is, uh, you know, we have been in person. Our kids are in the buildings. Um, um, I'm in the buildings on a weekly basis, and uh, we have some good learning taking place. Uh, right now, uh, we're in the middle of our sports seasons, so we have high school track going on, high school and middle school basketball for boys and girls. Um, right now, our, uh, our um, uh, high school is uh, taking midterms uh, this week. And uh, next week, uh, we have our outstanding uh, students for the quarters uh, that have been nominated for um, uh, all three of our schools. And at the Board of Ed, we'll also be doing our horse man, uh, crystal apple uh, quarterly um, um, award winners, which is our outstanding employee for each of the three schools on next Wednesday as well. Um, so as far as uh, the kids stuff, um, I feel like we always have good stuff in, in, in that realm and uh, certainly uh, some things to celebrate. I'll just comment as a parent, Patrick, I know there's been good feedback on your communication um, and also your snow day call. People were bummed that they missed your dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She calls it a snowflake day. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right. And I lost my agenda. So where are we next? Yeah, sorry. I just because you brought it up, Nicole, I will tell you, I'll be working with the principals next year and uh, through our advisory period periods, my goal is to uh, have the kids develop videos for the snow calls for next school year. Um, so uh, and have them be a contest. So you, people won't have to hear my voice at 5 a.m. <laughs> um, right. So, Geraldine, the next item is new business. All right, which cool. we don't have yeah, any. I popped it back up again. Um, okay. All right. So, oh my goodness. Um, new business, we have nothing, right? Right, that's and, what Amy said. Uh, yep, and on finished business, we have nothing. So we're really on to board member comments. So I will go around quickly if anybody has any, Nicole. I'll just say, you know, thank you to Jason and Patrick both. I think I've seen comments recently on Facebook about the transparency um, from both the town side and the school side. So thank you both. Um, and I hope everybody had a happy new year. All right, George. Uh, none, but it was nice seeing everyone. And uh, thank <laughs> you both to uh, Jason and Patrick. All right, Tom Lantzner. Yeah, I uh, echo Nicole. And I also wanted to wish her a happy birthday. Thank you. Um, somebody was <laughs> supposed to make a cake today. I don't, I don't remember who that was. I know. I I'm not going to get it via Zoom anyways, right? <laughs> and Bill? I'm good. I have nothing to add. All right, cool. Tom Talamini? I have nothing to add, except I hope this budget season we can be somewhat in person. We'll be out on a picnic table because I am not doing budget again on Zoom. That is not happening. That sounds good to me. Yep. I'm down. We can meet in a garage. <laughs> yep, there you go. We'll pop a tent, get some picnic tables. It will not be Zoom. <laughs> All 
All right. Um, upcoming meeting will be February 16th, which will probably be Zoom, but hopefully that will be our last one. So moment, let's have a motion to adjourn. This is Bill. I move to adjourn. <laughs> I will second. Nicole. <laughs> all right. All those in favor. Nicole? Aye. Yes. George? Aye. Tom L? Aye. Bill? Yes. Tom T? Yes. All right. We are all good. Have a wonderful month. Thank Bye. You. Thank you, buddy. Bye. Bye now. Have a good night. Thank you.